This tutorial is designed for people planning to go off-grid through solar power. I will break down the process into three straightforward steps. The first is the load calculation. Second is the battery capacity calculation. And lastly, we have solar panel sizing based on location. First, let me explain the easy approach for people who don't have enough time to watch the whole video. A 1200 watt hour battery with three daily sun hours requires 400 watts of solar panels. As easy as it seems, there's more to it than meets the eye. For example, what will this battery run? What type of battery is it? Do I also have three sun hours? What about inverter, battery and charge controller efficiency? Let's go through the whole process step by step. The first step is essential. We will have to list all our loads, such as a TV, fridge, lights, a laptop charger and a pump. Then we must determine each device power and estimate its daily runtime. If you have devices running once a week, you can divide the power consumption by 7 days to get an average. Remember to add the inverter's idle consumption. Depending on the model, this can be 10 watts for a 500 watt inverter and up to 30 watts for 5 kilowatt inverters. The runtime will be 24 hours unless you turn it off at night. We then have to multiply the power consumption by the time we run the device per day. If you have less than an hour, we take the minutes and divide by 60. We then get a decimal value. If the pump is on for 10 minutes a day, we multiply 250 watts by 0.16 to get 40 watt hours. We get a total of 2600 watt hours. For comparison, the average American household uses 10 kilowatt hours per day. We have finished the hardest part. Let's now determine how many batteries are needed to support these loads. We recently reached 25,000 subscribers. I want to thank everyone who has watched my videos and clicked the subscribe button. It means a lot to me. In step 2, we must decide how many days of autonomy we want in our off-grid system. Normally, I size for 3 days. So you can still power the loads when the sun doesn't shine. Even when it's cloudy, you will still get some power from the solar panels. So let's use an autonomy of 2.5 days. How many days of autonomy would you prefer for your off-grid system? Do you prefer the standard 3 days, something more conservative or ambitious? Remember, we had a total of 2600 watt hours per day. So if you multiply by 2.5, we become 6500 watt hours. Now I'll make a calculation for lead acid batteries and lithium batteries, because both will be different. If we use a lead acid battery, we can only use 50% of the capacity. So we must double the capacity. The first half will stay in the battery. The other half will be charged and discharged. So it's subjective to the Peugeot effect, which is the losses through heat generation at different current when charging and discharging a battery. This is 80% with a lead acid AGM battery. We get a total capacity of 14,625 watt hours. Now if the battery is 12 volts, we would need a 1200 amp hour battery. And for a 24 volt battery, this becomes 600 amp hours. And a 48 volt battery, this becomes 300 amp hours. Are you keeping up? Let's explore the more favorable lithium iron phosphate battery. A lithium iron phosphate battery, on the other hand, is more efficient. It comes in at 97% efficiency. We can discharge 100% lithium and still have 80% remaining capacity left after 6000 cycles. The calculation for lithium goes as follows. For a 12 volt battery, we would need 520 amp hours. For a 24 volt battery, we need 260 amp hours. And for a 48 volt battery, we would need 130 amp hours. Some people prefer to use 80% of lithium battery. In that case, the formula is as follows. Congratulations if you made it this far in the video. 
the hardest part is over. In step 3, we have to calculate the amount of solar panels to recharge the battery in one day. This will depend on the battery type. We need more solar power for the lead acid battery because it's less efficient than the lithium battery. We must determine the average number of sun hours for your location. Let's say your cabin is located on Lake Erie, close to Cleveland. Here is a sun hour chart for that location. We can see that November, December and January have the fewest sun hours. If we have to size the solar array for these months, we will need many solar panels which will be costly. That's why we will have a generator that supplies energy to the batteries during these months of low sunshine. Now February is the month with the fewest sun hours. We will base our calculation on 3 sun hours. Sun hours is a measurement of the amount of kilowatt hours per square meter per day. Your solar panels are rated at STC or standard test conditions at an irradiance of 1000 watts per square meter. So we can use this to do our calculation without having to use an efficiency factor. All these numbers are monthly averages. To recharge a lead acid battery from 50 to 100% we needed 8125 watt hours. With 3 sun hours, this becomes a total of 2700 watts. Then, divided by the charge control efficiency of 95%, we become 2850 watts of solar panels. To recharge a lithium battery from 0 to 100%, we needed 6700 watt hours. With 3 sun hours, this becomes a total of 2233 watts. We divide by the charge controller efficiency to become 2350 watts of solar panels. Then you can divide this amount by the power rating of your particular solar panel. Now that you've seen how to calculate the number of solar panels needed, how does this change your perspective on setting up an off-grid solar system? Are you more confident in planning your own setup? Subscribe for more videos like this and I will see you in the next one.